Genki. Being a frequent consumer of Yuri, it's no surprise that I watch the series that's the topic of conversation today, Adachi Tushimamura. So, what is the series about? Well, I tell you, but my explanation involves profanity, and with YouTube's monetization rules, I have to wait 30 seconds into the video to be free to say what I want, so I'm just gonna say thanks and stall out for time, and okay, yeah, I have no fucking clue what's going on in this show. And I don't think it's just me. If you look on my anime list and read the synopsis for Adachi Tushi Mamura, it's the most ambiguous, nondescriptive shit ever. However, let me attempt to decode this and give you guys my thoughts on this series. Despite my confusion, Adachi Tushi Mamura isn't convoluted or anything like that, but with three episodes in, it seems a bit directionless. All I know is that we have our main characters Adachi and Shimamura who are high schoolers, habitual class skippers, and might be gay for each other. Oh, and there's a fucking alien lolly thrown into the mix. Yeah. And that particular character is what throws everything out of orbit, pun intended. While Adachi to Shimamura appears to be a straightforward romance series between our MCs, the alien lolly's role is a complete mystery leaving me wondering if the plot of the series is simply going to be about getting Adachi and Shimamura to, uh, you, you know, hold hands or something else. Putting that aside, I've been enjoying the series so far, which is surprising since I didn't think it had a good pilot episode. I initially thought the series was going to flop hard because the first episode showed me no signs of progression. Which may sound harsh, but when you're watching two characters sit in a quiet gym talking about trivial things for half an episode, you might understand where I'm coming from. Episodes 2 and 3 were much more promising though, as they were focused on Adachi and Shimamura respectively, giving us intriguing insight to their characters, which I'll hone in on later. The odd part of the show, which doesn't happen a lot in romance series, is that Adachi has more or less already admitted that she has romantic feelings for Shimamura, albeit to the viewers only. Usually with series of this genre, most of it is us working towards developing the love between two characters. Essentially, getting them to realize that, hey, I kinda like your ugly ass, let's smash, and they get together at the end. However, with this show, Adachi and Shimamura were already friends before the start of the series, so their relationship is well established. I feel that if Adachi were to confess to Shimamura the very next episode, it's quite possible that they could become a couple with 66% of the show still left, which is a foreign concept. With circumstances like that, you think the pacing of the show would be fast, but that's not really the case. As I mentioned earlier with episode 1, sometimes we get the boring parts of this series where not much of anything is going on. I could honestly summarize all of the events that happen in these 3 episodes pretty quickly, but even in saying this, I'm not tripping over the sluggish tempo. The reason being, where Adachi Tushimamura lacks in story progression, it excels in characterization. This series originally began as a light novel, and from what I've heard of that medium, it specializes in providing in-depth inner monologue and fleshing out characters. Which I'm seeing so far translated well in the handling of Adachi and Shimamura. As for the cast of characters, it's bare bones minimum. So far, there are only 5 relevant characters, Sakura Adachi, Hogetsu Shimamura, Yashiro Chikama aka Clip Blocker number 1, Akira Hino aka Clip Blocker number 2, and Nagafuji aka Clip Blocker number 3. I definitely did the scarcity of characters in this instance because this series is short, so I prefer attention being aimed at the characters that actually matter since we're on borrowed time as opposed to introducing random ass side characters with no bearing on the main plot. Komi-san, I'm looking dead at you. As for the main two heroines of the series, I have no issues. As a pair, these two play well off each other because they are uncommonly similar. The pattern I usually see with series such as this is having the two romantic interest personalities be opposite of each other. It's what I call the cat and dog dynamic. What you'll normally see is a character who is cool, stoic, and reserved be matched up with a character who is excitable, energetic, and outgoing. For example, Yuzu and Mei from Citrus, Mel and Lan from Pose, and Naruto and Sasuke from Naruto. In the case of Adachi and Shimamura, we have MCs akin to each other as they are both cat-like, tending to keep their distance from others. 
I also find it unique that this couple isn't presented as the thing that draws the best out of each other. What I mean is, the relationship between Adachi and Shimamura is kind of enabling. They are delinquents by definition and they don't make any attempts to be any better. In fact, they're basically on some monkey see, monkey do type of shit. If Adachi skips class, then Shimamura probably will too and vice versa. Of course, this tandem can work in a positive way depending on whom takes the initiative. Like what transpired in episode 2 where Adachi decided to go to class, which she rarely does, all thanks to Shimamura suggesting the idea. As well, I think Adachi and Shimamura are solid as individual characters. For Adachi, she seems to be the one who is bringing the Yuri aspect to the series other than these two. It is glaringly obvious that Adachi has a huge crush on Shimamura despite her trying her best to dismiss these thoughts. It's actually funny as hell to see how in denial Adachi could be about her love for Shimamura. I have one quote from her that I'll read verbatim that'll put her mind into perspective. If there was no one else within a 5 kilometer radius from Shimamura and she was in a deep sleep and an all knowing deity just happened to reassure me that she wasn't going to wake up in the next 24 hours, maybe I'd get bored after 23 hours and I might kiss her once to release some boredom. Uh yeah, Adachi, I don't know if you know this, but you're gay! Other than that, Adachi appears to struggle with her strong attachment to Shimamura. She resents people cutting into her time alone with Shimamura and she ended up competing with the alien lolly just for Shimamura to notice her. What's dope is that Adachi herself acknowledges her clinginess, even describing it as obsessive. As for Shimamura, her feelings for Adachi doesn't seem to be as potent as the other way around. Although Shimamura isn't completely oblivious, she acts in a way that's inattentive to Adachi's crush. For example, she gave Adachi the notorious indirect kiss via donuts, held hands with Adachi without a second thought, and honored Adachi's request to sit in her lap. All of which gives Adachi the hope that her feelings may be recuperated unbeknownst to Shimamura. Furthermore, through her inner thoughts, we can see Shimamura is a complex character. While it may not show on her face, Shimamura is disinterested in most things, including her relationships. Now that isn't to say that Shimamura does not care, but her lack of passion ensures that she would be able to get over dilemmas with relative ease. As Shimamura said, if Adachi were to ignore her, she'd be somewhat depressed but would bounce back in 3 days and she feels no guilt in this. With a mentality like that, the people involved with Shimamura might feel slighted that their impact on her life is so minimal, but that's what makes her interesting. Shimamura also views boredom as an unbearable condition, which is why she doesn't want to be alone. However, the more time she spends with people, the more deeply she's involved with them, causing a conflict of interest and requiring a balance Shimamura might not be able to contain. All in all, I think the series is worth watching. If you're not a raging meathead or a Yuri hater, then I give Adachi Tushimamura a chance. I don't know exactly what will come from the series cause that damn alien lolly is a giant X factor, but I'm confident that it will pan out well. But guys, that is it for my first impressions of this series. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. I'm Sasuke the Savage and I am out. Taste of your soul, you're not in control, just giving you gold. Scared of your past, the future is closed. The start is the end, the end is a the start. They both are the same, can't tell them apart. Nigga, that's cuz. The intro is the outro.